Okay, so we'll go ahead we'll and get started. Lisa is uh, isn't going to be able to join us tonight. She's not feeling well, uh, but we'll go ahead and go. And, and uh, Bruce, it's good to have you back. Thank you, Ray. Thank you. We really do appreciate you. I appreciate in. all the prayers and the, the good wishes. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. So uh, feel free if you need to take a break, whatever you need to do. Thank you. You bet. Yeah. Uh, Jolene, do you have a, someone you'd like to introduce to the council? So I would like to introduce our, one of our newest staff people in the city, Rachel Boses. She's the Communications and Marketing General for the City Manager's Office. And she started last Monday. Welcome. Welcome, Welcome aboard. Welcome, Rachel. Thank you. Thanks, Jolene. Uh, part of our Leisure Services Board Resolution. Yes, sir. Thank you, and good evening, everybody. Um, Zalima has been working with the Leisure Services Advisory Board uh, since her induction into her new role um, and accordingly has uh, brought forward a resolution for you to consider um, not necessarily tectonic in what it hopes to accomplish but nonetheless probably important to do and so if I could turn over a minute to uh, Zalima to walk us through that for a second and do that. Zalima. Mayor, Council, good evening. Thank you all for uh, so really, as Carter indicated, uh, I started engaging with the Leisure Services Advisory Board when I started in my new role as director in October of last year. I can't believe it's been almost seven months now. Um, and so in that time, I uh, have really gotten some strong commitment from the current members that are six right now, um, that they really want to re-engage as uh, they were really designed to do when they were established in 1994 by resolution of this Council. Um, and so uh, they're really excited to take on more of an advisory role for the City Council, really represent the citizens, um, hearing the user groups give their reports, uh, and discussing their capital needs, and uh, providing some recommendations to this body to consider for how we should prioritize our recreation dollars. So um, they're excited to, to engage in that way. And as such, uh, we will be bringing a forward uh, resolution for your consideration two weeks from now, uh, as well as some uh, new revised operating policies for how they intend to run their, their meetings. And uh, so the first order of business is that they would like to change their name from Leisure S Services Advisory Board to the Parks and Rec Advi Advisory Board, um, mostly because of course, my department name has changed from Leisure Services since 2018. We have been referred to as Parks and Recreation. Uh, and of course, they represent some of what we are doing, and so uh, they want to make that name change. Also, the changes to the resolution simplifies the resolution and puts more of the emphasis on their operating rules and regulations. Um, gives us a little bit more flexibility to adjust as needed. Uh, and then finally, they do have three vacancies that need to be filled, and so we advertised for interested citizens, had four interviews. Uh, the uh, interview committee has recommended three to the board that have been uh, voted on, and so we will be asking for your appointment of three new members to that board at that time as well. I was hoping that Council Member Inga Bretson could be here to share her insights since she is the liaison to this board, um, but I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Questions for Zulima? I think this is good for the city. I think it's good for the city council. It's good for the uh, leisure services committee. Um, I think moving the name, changing the name for the broader spectrum of what you guys do is fantastic. I really, really good. It's, uh, it's real good. Real good. There's good energy right now, so we'll yes. just ride that moment. That's that's Can I ask you a question? Yeah. You is there a big change to the, the way you want to operate as opposed to how you're doing it now? Mayor, council member. So actually, um, we're sort of reverting back more to their original purpose than they have been functioning in previous years. Um, so most recently, I would say at least two years, maybe even longer than that, um, they've really had a pretty watered down role. Uh, they hear the user group reports and ask good questions, but then nothing happens. They weren't making recommendations to the council. They weren't actively engaged in decision making with staff. Um, and so, and that was part of their original charter when they were created. And so now we're kind of getting back to those roots where they're playing a much more important role in advising the city council on how we should proceed. Almost like a planning and zoning situation yes. where they make recommendations. 
Yep. Cool. Right. So when I first got onto council, they um, used to come and report to us. They'd actually come and I'm, I'm sure Sean and Steve will remember. They would come in and do a rec, I don't know, every so often they would come in. Is that something that we'd be open to or is that beyond the purview of what we want this group to do? I'm just kind of maybe what you're thinking, Zulima. Mayor, my recommendation is that they would okay. utilize me to communicate their message, but also come and do presentations and updates, okay. much like your other advisory boards do. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Is council okay with that? Okay. Awesome. Anything else? Okay. okay. Thanks, Zulima. Thank you. Thank you. All right. One way to two way conversion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, our job the last time we talked about this project was to to, to double check to see if indeed we could find a way to fund this project and and meet the needs that have been identified in this conversation uh, for a number of years now and 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 be done with that and hopefully gain the benefits that it uh, that it intended. And we're going to pull up the, the exhibit here that uh, will remind you where we're talking. We're talking about you know Walcott and, and Durban downtown for the most part. Um, the unfortunate news is that in, in terms of the homework that we took on to try to find an alternative funding uh, program, if you will, to make this project happen, uh, we um, did not find that ARPA would come through for us and, and make this project happen. So, uh, you know, trying to access state dollars to do the project is not a possibility. It doesn't appear, at least not at this point in time. Uh, maybe when transportation dollars become available and infrastructure type dollars, you know, flow from the feds, maybe we can talk about that as an alternative funding source. Who knows? Uh, but that's not clear at this point in time. Um, since the time that we have visited about that in work session, we've also brought forward recommendations that um, um, have required capital dollars that I was hoping to be able to point to as a means of getting this project complete. Um, namely, um, you know, putting together the, uh, the depleting fund, if you will, for the fire fund day obligation that we have with the state of Wyoming. Uh, you'll recall that uh, we, uh, you know, talked about putting aside $4 million so that we have a uh, a sinking fund to support that obligation annually and so on. I was kind of hoping that that wouldn't require so much money on the front end, although I still would suggest a sinking fund uh, model is a, a very good way to go so that we don't have that operational requirement every single year for the next 20 years. Um, be that as it may, the options that I would point to in terms of being able to fund that project are uh, diminishing. And so at this point in time, I would take your feedback with regard to uh, the commitment you would like to see to get the project done, or not, as it were, because that's kind of where we left it. It was like, okay, let's see what alternative funding sources we might find, and let's chat and uh, see if we can get this project complete. Steve. <clears throat> I know we're in a financial bind, and I know we always talk about kicking the can down the road, but this project has been on the books for 15, 20 years. Um, I guess I would propose to wait to make those changes until we have to redo those streets. Right now we're doing the southern part of Walcott, but when we have to come in and repave, redo sewers and things on the, the northern parts of Durban and Walcott, we go ahead and do this project at that time because we're already going to be restriping the road. We're going to have equipment already mobbed and demobbed. You're going to have the pavers there. So that 750 won't be a 750 add-on to the regular street project. It might be a 250 add-on. So granted, we are moving the project down the road, but to make a firm commitment to do this project in conjunction with our normal street maintenance that should be coming up in the next few years. Sean? I would agree with that. <laughs> I was going to say something different, but... Um, yeah. two, two, two questions. Um, 
one, I guess the first one would be, is there really a mechanism that we can use to commit what would then be a future council to taking on that project? And two, which may be related um, probably for Andrew, when are those streets, where are they in the, in the rotation? When are they coming up? Approximately. Uh, do you mind if I defer? Yeah, that'd Andrew? be great. Yeah. Andrew? Mayor, council, councilman, generally I would agree with that assessment, but keep in mind that the cost for this project are primarily due to signal modifications that are going to have to ha happen regardless of the street condition. Island removal, that has to happen regardless of the street deterioration. So a lot of the, those costs are not, in my opinion, going to go down substantially. You may get a contractor already mobilized and may say some of those costs, but the, the vast majority of these costs are sunk in hard costs that have to happen regardless if we have to do a sewer main or water main or resurface the street. The striping is a very small percentage of the cost for this project. And I can tell you, if it's on, it's not on our upcoming capital improvement project, either Durban or Walcott uh, of this stretch downtown. So you're looking at least five years out or more. Bruce and then Jack. Well, we've talked about this project and kicking the can down the road, and we've spent money on two different occasions now doing a research, I believe your outfit did, um, one of the two. And the problem I see with it is we're dumping all this money out into the interstate now to get people to come into our downtown area. And yet our downtown area is not really very accessible, which is proven by those reports if you read them. So, you know, we're funneling people down there and then we have no way to get them around. So we're kind of running into a cement wall, if you ask me. Um, we don't have the money, we don't have the money, I get it. And the police station for me was far more important than this was. But um, if we really want to revitalize downtown, at some point this has got to get done. And how we go about doing it, I don't know, but I, I don't think we per se kick the can down the road. I think we find a way to keep it involved in our conversations so that in the event some money does come up, we've overbid some stuff, we have some extra money, maybe we can sneak it in then. I don't know what the answer is, but I think it's imperative that it gets done. Both those studies showed that. And we're trying to push people into that area, so we have to do something. Jack. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I agree generally with <laughs> questions and comments. I guess you reference possible funding mechanisms through some of the federal grant programs mm -hmm. that are coming through. Can you go into that in any more detail, whether like the feasibility of those options? Mr. Mayor, uh, Council, I, I wish I could. Um, we, we did put out a request uh, through the WAM organization very recently to try to get some kind of finite detail as to what those dollars would look like and what projects might qualify. And, and that's just really unclear right now, aside from sort of the YDOT level applications that we're seeing coming to pass. Okay. Uh, so, so right now, uh, those infrastructure or transportation dollars, um, as far as cities and counties access to them are concerned, is very unclear. Can I do a quick follow-up? Yeah, is there a way for us to kind of flag this project as a priority as we learn more about those funding opportunities, just so we don't lose it when we're in learning mode? Mr. Mayor, Council, that would certainly be direction we would take, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, Carter, that would be direction within when we have the capital construction conversation during the budget year, or when when it's referenced that when Jai says keeping it within that conversation, um, how does that? I guess I'm kind of trying to hold on to that and trying to get a picture of it. Uh, Mr. Mayor, certainly that would be very ideal if that timing were available to us, and and should it become, uh, you know, that timely as far as the. Uh, the direction is concerned, I, I would be certain to include that in our budget conversations. I'm just nervous that we won't be that lucky. Okay. You know, so hopefully by the end of the calendar year, we will have a lot more clarity. But it, it is kind of a hope. <laughs> uh, so, but that's what we'll definitely keep our ear to the ground for. So it sounds like from what Andrew's saying that 
putting it down the road five years sounds like the, the resurfacing is not a option. It's probably worst case scenario. But we I would say have that on the table. Sure. Okay. Sure. It, isn't it also fair to say that every year this just that we put this off, it's gaining fifty to a hundred thousand dollars adding to this project, which is what we've learned, right? Mm -hmm. So I would agree. Yeah, I would agree. That is fair. And I, I understand we have other streets that we need done too. My my only concern is this big push for for our downtown and then leaving it like that. Yeah. I don't know what we do. Fair point. Is that direction clear? <laughs> yes. <laughs> we don't know. <laughs> find money. <laughs> direction yeah, money. find money. <laughs> and that's okay. I mean that's okay. In direction. So I guess council what it looks like is that we'll we'll have that conversation, but it's not very hopeful as far as capital construction conversation. Um, it looks like our options are pretty limited at this point. Uh, but I do agree that with everybody's sentiment that it's an important aspect that we probably, you know, we were talking about this when we were a couple of years ago on council and it was 400,000, you know, and in hindsight, we probably should have done it at that point. <laughs> so yeah, I take complete absolute blame for that. <laughs> Amber. Uh, okay. So I'm, I'm a little unclear on what, like when we'll revisit it, what the mechanism, like is there a, is there a date that we want to look at this again? Are we waiting for the state? Like what's the parameters like that we're setting up for this? Mr. Mayor, uh, council member, let me take a shot at, at perhaps answering that question a little more with a, a sharper point. Um, I would say l allow us to do some more recon in terms of getting some information. The transportation infrastructure bill would be certainly a target of ours. Um, and perhaps this summer bring back s some, some knowledge, hopefully, with regard to what some of those options and opportunities look like. That at least sets us up for construction the next capital season, construction season, if you will, which we probably wouldn't have been able to do until then anyway. Um, uh, with any luck, we'll, we'll have better data maybe this summer. So. If it's okay, I could put it down as kind of a, uh, a, a tickler item for this summer discussion. And uh, that's, what, that's what we call it in business. That's all. Right. It's a tickler that is item. So in our words, it would be a future that. agenda item. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There you go. Thanks for clarifying. Can we, can we officially term? change that to tickler item? Yes, we can. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. I like yours, though. It's kind of warm yeah. and fuzzy. Getting where you said. <laughs> Sounds good. So, so then right. we'll if councils. Oh, got more questions. Yeah, go ahead, Amber. Sorry. So, for my benefit, does that mean it's just going to like hang out in the grid, like on the future agenda item grid, so it doesn't disappear out of our consciousness? It, it, with a summer designation, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> Thanks, Amber. Yes. yes. I'm not going to remember it. Is why I'm saying. So, like, I'm no, I don't uh, remember it. Uh, it's somewhere in there. You. <laughs> <laughs> Tickler. Tickler, tickler box. Or it's a little tickler box. Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> mercy. I, I blame me. We're on deep ice. For shallow ice. All right, any other further discussion on that? No. Please, God, let us move forward. Yeah, All right. Good. Wham! <laughs> so, <Bam>. um, <laughs> we've talked a little bit about this leading up to tonight uh, with regard to the... Um, the resolutions that we would hope to get your blessing to move forward to WAM to consider okay. as a part of their broader legislative agenda. Uh, you, you saw in your packet what those items included. Um, and I, just to go through them real quickly uh, with you tonight to make sure you're comfortable that we, you know, do move forward to the floor and, and, and again through the WAM channels to see what kind of traction we can get with these issues. Um, the uh, resolutions that uh, we want to bring to your attention, um, pardon me here. Okay, I've lost myself a bunch of paper. I got it right here. Yeah, thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you. Um, oh, you got yeah, it. I found okay. it. Yep, thank you, okay. thank you. Mm -hmm. Uh, the vulnerable persons and professions, um, that has been assigned to judiciary, but this would be one of the resolutions that we hope to get WAM's weight behind as well. And again, that's in judiciary. Um, so 
So we're excited to see where that goes with them if, uh, if you approve. Uh, missing persons is another one that we've talked quite a bit about. And uh, while it's not assigned on an interim basis right now, we do think that we have some options if we have your blessing to move forward with that conversation. <clears throat> um, the, the, uh, the, the pharmaceutical manager bill that took a lot of conversation in this past legislative discussion has been assigned to corporations. We would like to have a seat at the table and continuing that conversation should you approve uh, for a resolution uh, with, uh, with WAM's help. Uh, we also want to talk about retail uh, liquor licensing and perhaps some ideas that we would hope to see some loosening up of the statutes in that regard. That has been assigned on the interim as well and we'd like your blessing to, to ask WAM for help there. Uh, we always, it seems, have a request for discussion on more uh, appropriate municipal revenue options available for cities and towns in Wyoming. We'd like to take another shot at that as well with WAM's um, assistance. And then furthermore, the other thing we want to talk to WAM about and getting their support for would be with, with regard to a more appropriate division, if you will, of the um, gaming revenue, we talked in the last gaming discussion that we had that indeed we split revenue with the county for no real reason on two levels, by the way. And I'm, I'm wondering if Wyoming would like to participate in that conversation as well to see if it can gain some traction uh, from their standpoint. Right. So that's the, that's the agenda, if you will, that we'd like to forward to Wyoming. Uh, questions, comments about it? Just one. Yeah. Is the county a member of WAM? Uh, Mr. Mayor, Councilman, the county is a member of a similar organization to WAM, but not a member of WAM. Steve, Kathy. Okay. Well, I guess I had a question, or maybe more for Mr. Henley, but basically, what is the difference between like assault and aggravated assault? Because isn't that more along the lines of what that first resolution is all about? Um, I don't think it's, because I remember that, and I haven't looked at it for months now. But uh, actually, I, I think that it, it goes to more serious of the vulnerable person uh, <coughs> individuals. Um, it, basically, you're, you're, you're looking not so much at the the damage done to the vulnerable person as the fact that they are in a position of being vulnerable and they're repeatedly vulnerable. And so if you're looking at educators, you go into work every day, you're vulnerable because there's so much violence in certain <coughs> schools. Uh, you you uh, go into uh, your bailiff and, or uh, a judge and you know, you're subject to people who are angry and upset. That's the distinction I remember, whether it be by assault or whether it be by uh, aggravated assault, which of course goes up to a felony level. It may apply to both, but I don't remember exactly right now. Because that was that was what my part of my concern was, is that what you're doing is you're putting another law, you're trying to, to fix something that's not broke, that we already have a, a law or a designation there that was already segregating that. That was, that was what I was trying to figure out. Yeah, yeah. when I listened to that, it was, it was really pretty convincing as to, as to why this was a particular problem. It's just pretty narrow professions or interactions within the society. But, but, but I understand your, your concern and your thoughts. Um, if I may, we, we do have a certain class of people here in town that don't feel safe, and that's the reason this is coming up, which brings me to asking, since we're going into agenda review, whatever happened to that legislation, Carter, Carter that they were going to bring to us in November that we still haven't seen anything about? Whatever became of that? Uh, Mr. Mayor, Councilman, I, I would um, assume you're talking about um, an, an ordinance proposal that our advisory committee is kind of working on and, and potentially bringing forward. They, they are working on it, and uh, as a matter of fact, uh, Mr. Henley has been giving it a lot of thought and having some dialogue with them as well. Uh, as I understand it, I, I would expect that you guys should be able to see 
um, a draft uh, coming up yeah, early this summer, say June time frame. Is that fair? Uh, June, July. June, July. So, <clears throat> Captain Brown, I don't know if you can. No, I can't because I wasn't aware of it. So I know the definition of vulnerable, oh. especially when we're talking about the elderly, but the way he's actually defining it, it's a wider scope. So I haven't been read in on this okay. new law, but if it's defining specifically the vulnerable when we're talking about the elderly or people who can't take care of themselves. I mean, like he says, we have misdemeanor assault all the way to aggravated assault because then I think we're trying to protect a certain sect of people, but that was a lot more broader definition of vulnerable adults, so I haven't been read in on it to give you a good overview. So okay. thank you. Appreciate yeah. it. So WAM resolutions, we do need a do we need a thumbs up on that? We're voting on tonight. Well, oh, we're voting on about tonight, that's right. And it is on non consent, so it will have discussion opportunities associated with it. Okay. Okay. Um, Will we be discussing each of the proposals individually, or will we discuss them as a collective? Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, Council Member, I would say that the idea was that um, you would give us a thumbs up with respect to the agenda we're proposing. However, you certainly have the opportunity to revise said agenda pursuant to whatever resolutions you don't think should pass, okay. potentially. I I'll plan to recuse myself from the entire discussion then due to the liquor license element of the agenda. Yeah, I would open it up when we have the conversation. We can talk about a, if anybody wants to say individual ones or how you want to do that, we'll leave it open. Um, I would think you could just abstain from the one part of it, not all of it, right? Well, I mm -hmm. think it's, there's not, it's not really separated into parts yeah, of the whole, it's one vote, right? Yeah. Like it's it's like one vote for the whole part resolution part package. C, part D or, right. or whatever, so, yep. so I'll just, okay. just and I like to point out to the council I brought reading glasses today. I've crossed over. <laughs> They're 1.5. How old are you? Ray, how old are you? Oh, oh sorry. We're gender review. Do we need to go over anything? Uh, I'm, I don't have anything else. Okay. Okay.
please silence their cell phones. Uh, council meetings are also uh, televised and they can be viewed on channel 192. Um, I now call the May 3rd, 2022 regular council meeting to order. The chair would entertain a motion two by minute action, excuse the absence of council member Ingebrigtsen. So moved. Second. Moved by council member Kathy, seconded by council member Pollock. Please cast your vote. Oh, sorry, Bruce. Sorry, I'm coming. No, 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 you're fine. No. Please record the vote. With all members voting aye, the motion passes. Please join the vice mayor in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> <laughs> I want to take a moment, though, before we go into our minutes approval to welcome back uh, Council Member uh, Nell. Uh, we appreciate it, and so we're so glad that you're back with us, okay? Thank you very much. The chair would entertain a motion to approve by minute action the minutes of the April 19th, 2022 regular council meeting as published in the Casper Star Tribune on April 27th, 2022. So moved. Second. Moved by Vice Mayor Friel, seconded by Councilman uh, Council Member Gamroth, any amendments? Okay, please cast your vote. Please record the vote. Council Members Kathy and Nell abstaining, motion passes. Chair would entertain a motion to approve by minute action the minutes of the April 19th executive session. So moved. Second. Moved by Council Member Pollock, seconded by Council Member Johnson. Any amendments? Please cast your vote. Please record the vote. Council Members Kathy and Al abstaining. The motion passes. Chair to entertain a motion to approve by minute action the May 3rd, 2022 bills and claims as audited by City Manager Napier. I move. Second. Moved by Councilmember Johnson, seconded by, by, by Vice Mayor Friel. Any abstentions? Please cast your vote. Please record the vote. All members voting aye, the motion passes. Now we turn to a bright spots in our community. Uh, we are pleased to welcome representatives from the Casper uh, Community Tennis Association here tonight. And I would like to introduce the association vice president, Mr. Ryan Jay, to say a few words. Come on up. Yep, come on up here, Ryan. Yep. Thank you, guys. Uh, first, we'd just like to, uh, the members of the Casper Community Tennis Association are here to thank the staff, uh, city staff and council, and in particular, Carter Napier and Zulima Lopez. Um, I've been wonderful to work for, uh, work with, I'm sorry, for recognizing National Tennis Month and to maintaining our public tennis facilities that allow people of all ages to play tennis. Uh, the Casper Community Tennis Association mission is to provide opportunities for people of all ages to learn and play the game of tennis. We believe that tennis is not only good for physical health, but also builds discipline, confidence, and critical thinking skills, and teaches responsibility, respect, and strong work ethic. In addition, youth tennis players are less likely to participate in risky behaviors and more likely to get good grades and participate in community activities. Um, again, thank you guys for recognizing National Tennis Month and for your commitment to maintaining our existing tennis facilities, which um, Carter and Zalima have really done a great job of uh, leading us that way. Uh, we have several other activities planned for National Tennis Month, including Level 1 coaches training on Saturday and Sunday, May, May 14th and 15th at the 307 Tennis Club, uh, Tennis Carnival at Washington Park on Saturday, May 21st at 10 a.m., which... Um, uh, we have a couple of people who are going to be leading that. Uh, National Tennis Month at Natrona County Library. Library, I'm sorry. Check out um, where they can check out junior and adult tennis rackets um, and great tennis books all month long, um, which Angela Emery has kind of rounded that all up about. But again, thank you to all of you guys for uh, for encouraging people to get out and play tennis. So, that's all we have. so Brian, I'm going to have you stay there because I'm going to read a proclamation. Okay. And then I'm going to have you come up and get that. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. 
Whereas on May 21st, 1881, the United States Tennis Association was founded to create rules and standards for the emerging game of tennis and is now the largest nonprofit tennis organization in the world with over 700,000 members from every corner of the country. And whereas the USTA leads a promotion and growth of tennis and proudly partners with local tennis clubs, including the Casper Community Tennis Association, to showcase the important health, social, and educational benefits of tennis, and to make the sport available to everyone, regardless of age, environment, condition, or ability. And whereas research by the Physical Activity Council shows that more than 21.6 million Americans played tennis in 2020, a 22% increase in participants over 2019 and the highest number of players since the PAC study began in 2007. And whereas the accessibility of tennis for citizens of Casper of all ages and abilities has contributed to making our community a happier and healthy place. And whereas the USTA has declared the month, month of May as National Tennis Month to encourage players, organizations, public and private facilities, and others to promote tennis programs, program classes at parks and other facilities to showcase tennis and spread the word about the sport and benefits it and its benefits and help citizens find opportunities to play in their communities. Now, therefore, I, Ray Pacheco, Mayor of the City of Casper, proclaim May 2022 as National Tennis Month and hereby urge the citizens of Casper to play and help promote tennis as a lifelong sport. In witness whereof, I have hereunto sent my hand and caused the official seal of the City of Casper, Wyoming, to affix this third day of May 2022. Come up here. Thank you guys so much. Now is the time we invite anyone in the audience who wishes to speak with the council to come forward. As stated on the first page of the agenda, we do ask the following. Please state your name and address. Direct all questions and comments to the mayor. No personal attacks on council or on staff or council will be tolerated. Council will not respond to personnel matters. Those will all be referred to the city manager. Questions posted by speakers may or may not be responded to by council members. Presentations are limited to only five minutes and any dupl no duplication of speakers will be allowed, nor any time extensions will be permitted. Please note that public hearing, um, hearings and ordinances each have their own comment period, and so please hold your comments for those items until we reach them. Good evening. Hi, Mike. How are you? How is everyone? Mayor Pacheco, Mike Pyatt, 3841 East 15th, Casper. I was here a couple of weeks ago, if you recall, and I'd had some thoughts since then. The issue, of course, was the abortion clinic who's come to town. Uh, we've had a couple of good protests, but what I'd like to talk about tonight is what I think could be your role in this. Uh, Liberty's Place for You promotes liberty, We'd like to promote for the most vulnerable in our culture, and that's the unborn. And I think there's two pronged approach. First, the moral approach, and then commerce. A sign of a soft underbelly of any culture, uh, or even elected body, is silence in the face of evil. We know, like all other great evils, such as uh, in the past slavery, um, and abortion today, they cannot be extirpated by simple legislative decree or contrivances. It will take voices and action by the general public, the city, county commissioners, private citizens, to make a difference. So I appeal to you on the basis of your conscience and moral compass to consider perhaps a proclamation for the unborn. Uh, if you fail to speak, the silence will be deafening. A recent Marist poll said 70% of the uh, nation believes that life begins at conception. 
It didn't talk about pro-abortion or otherwise, but if one believes life begins at conception, it's hard to imagine that you could support an abortion clinic. So that's on the moral basis. Um, on the basis of commerce, what about that? Is an abortion clinic good for the commerce in Casper? Will it bring more money to Casper, perhaps tainted money? What about the business that will ultimately reduce our population? That's what this abortion clinic will do. And women who come to Casper to get abortions, it's unlikely they're going to go shopping right after that. And they're aborting somebody's son, daughter, grandchild. Since 73, 62 million lives have been taken. The cost of that, if you just look at the commerce part, is incalculable. If, as a body of elected officials, you use to take you choose to take no position. Many city Casper residents will translate that as moral cowardice. I believe that's not the case. So I would, my plea is that you would consider making a day of proclamation for the unborn, the most vulnerable in our population. So I've even got time left, but <laughs> I appreciate uh, granting us this time. And again, we are champions for the unborn, and we'd like to hear from our elected officials and their position. Okay. Uh, Councilmember Dell. I am one of the 70 percenters, and I have publicly said so. Jeremiah 1, verse 5 says, uh, for I knew you in the womb, and you will go out and do great things for the nations. So I believe in the word of our Lord. Amen. I am against uh, the abortion clinic. I have been from day one. That is not a city standpoint. That's a personal standpoint of mine. But I will let you know there is what I would call sunlight on the horizon. And I'm going to read this to you. At our most recent legislative se session, the Wyoming legislature passed a bill. It's House Bill 92 uh, that will make abortion illegal in Wyoming, um, except in cases of incest, sexual assault, and to save the life of the mother or because there's a threat to a major bodily function. However, this bill will go into effect five days after a decision overturning Roe versus Wade by the U.S. Supreme Court, and it's certified by the governor to the Secretary of State. Now, I have it on very good authority that within the next four to five days, Roe versus Wade will be overturned, and our Wyoming law says that we must follow within five days. So I think there is sunlight on the horizon for those of us that care about these unborn children. I'm with you. Praise the Lord that that's on the horizon, and Bruce, we're glad you're back. Thank God that you are. How's your wife? I know I'm not supposed to ask you. No, no, you're, you're fine. How's his wife, Mayor so, Jacko? So far, so good, Mike. Okay. Everything's going. They're thank healing you. well. Thank you for asking. Here. And again, thank you. Uh, any other comments? we got a minute left. Any questions from me? So, Mike, uh, what I'll do is, is that, you know, if this is a conversation the council will have about a proclamation, sure. it will have to be discussed um, within the council. Anytime that something like that's brought up, that'll have a conversation with that. Um, and I'll leave it up to each individual council member if they choose to say anything. If, if not, we'll um, leave it at that for right now. Okay. Very good. And again, thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Others? Sherry Lewis, 1867 West Ridge Circle, 18604. Hi, Sherry. Hi. Good to see you all. I just wanted to get behind Mike and agree with him. One of the reasons 25 years ago I moved to Casper was that there was no abortion clinic in Casper and none in Wyoming. And I've, I've, I've just stayed with that ever since. Also, I've chosen to be part of the Republican Party here. And in our uh, platform, it says, the Republican Party of Natrona County believes the unborn has a fundamental right to life that cannot be infringed, believes that we should outlaw abortion unless it's life-threatening, and believes adoption is preferred to, as an alternative to an abortion. And the, the 
oh, I'm sorry, and supports legislation that would encourage adoption and protecting adoptive parents. And this was a real shock to us, and we, we would just like to ask you all if you would take a stand with us and turn, turn it down and uh, whatever it takes to move them out of here. Thank you, Sherry. Any questions for Sherry? Thank you, Sherry. Appreciate it. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah. <clears throat> go back up the opposite direction. Uh, hello, Mr. Mayor, uh, City Council persons. My name is Tyler Sesser. I'm the Executive Director of Art 321, um, which is at 321 West Midwest Avenue. I'm also a member of the old Yellowstone District's um, uh, Planning Committee. And I come to you today um, to talk a little bit about an event that we're holding. Um, we've been, for about a year, looking at holding our annual fundraiser at the new OYD parking lot, um, which we've been working with some city folks on, on that, and it was like a great space. So we looked at the food truck pads. We saw this great kind of open, flexible use space to have just a, a quarter of it used for our annual fundraiser right across the street. Um, but as time has gone on, it's been really hard to find um, you know, like the lease hasn't been agreed upon with the city and the state, um, and then this recent uh, issue with the alcohol use. Um, at a previous city council meeting, we learned that like the MOU that you guys had with the state had referenced like events very similar to ours. So I guess, and part of what I'm hoping to do tonight is encourage you to keep trying to get the state to honor that MOU that they have with you and to allow for that space to be used in just occasionally and with lo nearby locally run organizations and businesses be used for events that would be really great for our, our community. Um, it's put us in a real bind. Um, we are now, thankfully, we have some great city folks. Carla's been helping us with a plan B to use ash, uh, but that's gonna have more impact on our local businesses because we're not you know, kind of off the street setting up two major tents. I mean, we've got two 40 foot by 100 foot tents that are gonna house over 50 different artists from around the state. Um, we have a whole tournament that's going to feature dodgeball and all these different events that we got to have space for. Things that really extend past what, uh, like David Street Station, could, could allot for us. Um, we have great partners, Gaslight sponsoring with us, the office, Rockas is helping out with stuff, but it's we're trying to, to stay out of their way by having it in that parking lot. Um, so yeah, my, my ask to you tonight is, is to please try and honor that MOU with the state um, and encourage at least just... Uh, alcohol on the property if we're not allowed to sell it from that property. I'm thinking about like the art walks that we have. We've long had them as open container downtown and I'm concerned that like, all right, we have somebody carrying a, a beverage that enters the, the the path in between the parking lot but that steps into the parking lot. Like, what's that going to look like for some people? Um, and it just seems a hard thing to enforce. So thank you for your time um, and appreciate any questions. Any questions for Tyler? Yeah, go ahead, Vice Mayor. Tyler, have you had a conversation with the city since I talked to you earlier today? Yes, Carla and I have had uh, uh, several back and forth emails just getting us set up for ASH, and I think that that's, we're heading in a good direction. Uh, it's just put a, a kind of a crunch on getting uh, police department permission and things that we try to do with everything that we do. Um, it's just moving away from OID parking lot uh, to there in a matter of a month is, is challenging. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Frio. Anybody else? Oh, great. Thanks, Tyler. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anybody else? Good evening. I'm Beth Nackbar, so I'm at 10995 East Wagon Trail Road, Evansville, Wyoming, 82636. Um, I have some... I'm pro-life, and I'm here to speak about this abortion clinic. I'm totally opposed to it, and I'm so thrilled to hear what your colleague, Bruce Snell, spoke of earlier. Um, I have some questions that we, the people, would like to have answered about this abortion business. Um, number one, who is the one that gave the okay, the yes, for this to um, be open or to come to Casper? Um, who's doing the abortions? Um, are there doctors doing these? And if so, do they have admitting privileges to any hospitals? 
um, and what hospitals would they have admitting privileges for patients that go into an emergency during the procedure. Um, are there nurses that will be doing these or PAs and under whose medical license will they be operating? And I'm looking for specific names of people, not just positions. Um, also, what kind of abortion procedures will be used? Is this going to just be by mail, the abortion pill, or is this going to be telemed, or are we talking about actual services on site? Um, what is the protocol for babies who will be born alive after abortion? What's going to happen with them? Who is regulating this abortion clinic as surgical procedures are being performed? Who's inspecting the abortion clinic and how often? and what standards will be upheld. Um, in closing, I would like to challenge each Wyoming citizen to go on record where they stand on this life and death matter. Um, according to our creator, Wyoming stands to be blessed for choosing life and cursed for choosing death. The stakes are enormous. In fact, Deuteronomy 30:15, God says, see, I set before you life and prosperity, death and destruction. So please take these considerations um, when you think about the safety of the potential patients that would be going there, and when they go in there, there'll be at least two heartbeats, more if they're multiple babies, but when they come out, there'll be one less heartbeat coming out. Thank you. So Mrs. Nackbar, well, I can answer a couple of those for you okay. right now, because I did have a, an email that came to the council um, asking some of those specifics, and we did respond to that. So the, the question of who okayed it um, from the city, so uh, we, we really have no jurisdiction over businesses that come to Casper. Um, and so legally, um, we have no oversight um, of, of, of a business persuade, only based upon maybe the um, zoning um, and uh, the safety of the, of the building, et cetera. So we really don't have any of that. Um, since it's um, still legal, um, we really have no jurisdiction over any of those types of stuff. We don't know who the doctors are. Um, we don't know anything about the nurses um, or the types of abortions that will be happening. A um, uh, lot of it, you, you may know more about it than, than the city council or the city government knows. Yeah, or we maybe know about as much as the same um, as you and I um, know. And so um, we really don't. I know that the question has been asked um, who okayed it, uh, who sanctioned it, and, and really the city had no, no bearing upon that um, as that goes. So um, they're exercising the, like I know Council Member Nell said, you know, it's their right to come in um, and being able to do this, um, you know, based upon the, the, the status of the law right now. So I'm just thinking with due respect. Um, Considering the gravity of the consequences of the choice made to go forth with an abortion clinic to Casper, I would submit that this should be a, um, an item for vote um, for the public in November. I mean, if we're voting on how we spend our pennies, mm -hmm. surely we can vote on how we want to, you know, what we want to do with the unborn babies. Sure. No, I understand exactly what you're saying, and you know, and and to bring that up as a as a. Um, a vote would certainly, I mean, I have to turn to um, our legal counsel to, to determine if that's something we would, would be able to even do. Um, and so the, based upon the, from the, from the advice that I'm getting from um, our attorney and so forth, um, everything is legal around it. Um, there's nothing that we can do, um, barring, like I said, a prostitution house, we couldn't allow that to happen, obviously. Um, you know, so that, those are the things that, um, unfortunately, City of Casper um, has no bearing right now on that as a city government. One and, and final consideration would be um, to consider um, a resolution that would make Casper a sanctuary city for the unborn babies to go on record. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mrs. Nakbar. I appreciate your time. Any others? So that was what I was going to say was the city of Casper. Um, I know there have been some questions about that. Uh, so the city of Casper obviously uh, doesn't have um, an official stance on that. We can have that conversation, um, I think, as a council if that's the, the case. But um, uh, as far as who okayed that, um, like I said to Mrs. Nackbar, we um, have no bearing upon that. And so... Um, uh, it certainly is an emotional issue on both sides. 
It is a very difficult, very tough conversation to have. And so it's a not, not easy. And so um, we certainly look at that with mercy um, for both, um, whoever has to choose to do that on either side. Um, yeah, Councilmember Burnell. I just, I wanna urge those folks that are against it, just like I am to be peaceful, pray about it. Um, there, are, there are things on the horizon that are working towards bringing this to an end. And uh, so just pray about it, be peaceful, um, show the love. That's all I can ask you to do. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Establishing dates for public hearings. Please read the consent agenda titles. Established May 17th, 2022 as the public hearing date for the following four items. 8A1A, an ordinance amending Chapter 5.24, Hotels and Rooming Houses, of the Casper Municipal Code, which addresses the licensing and regulation of commercial hotels, motels, and lodging facilities within the City of Casper. 8A1B, changes to the Mobile Vendor Parking Permit Ordinance, Chapter 10. 8A1C, consideration of an ordinance approving a vacation, replat, and subdivision agreement for Kensington Heights Edition Number 5. And item 8A1D, Consideration of an ordinance approving a vacation, replat, subdivision agreement, and zone change for Harmony Hills, edition number four. Chair, to entertain a motion to, by minute action, establish the public hearing dates just read. So moved. Moved by Councilmember Kathy, seconded by Councilmember Pollock. Any abstentions or nay votes? Uh, I'm going to abstain from 8A1C and 8A1D. Okay. Please cast your vote. Please record the vote. With Vice Mayor Friel's abstentions noted, motion passes. I now declare the public hearing open for the consideration of the transfer of ownership of retail liquor license number 30. Mr. City Attorney, do you have any exhibits? Thank you, Mayor and Council. We have uh, four exhibits tonight. Exhibit number one, correspondence from Fleur Tremel to J. Carter Napier, dated April 13, 2022. Exhibit number two, Affidavit of Publication, is published in the Casper Star Tribune, dated April 25, 2022. Exhibit number three, Affidavit of Website Publication, is published on the City of Casper website, dated April 13, 2022. And exhibit number four, Liquor License Application, filed March 29, 2022. Thank you, Mr. City Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. I think the only other thing that I might add uh, that uh, might be a little different with respect to this address and the typical use of this, of this license, uh, it is possible that in the future this could be the home of a, of a bar facility as well, which uh, both would be consistent with the use of this kind of a license. Thank you. Council will now listen to public comments. Public hearing comments are limited to five minutes and no duplication of speakers will be allowed. At this time, I would ask those individuals who wish to speak in favor of the transfer of ownership of retail, retail liquor license number 30 to Half Barrel, Inc., please approach the lectern. Uh, no, for those who wish to um, speak in favor, I'm sorry, in favor. Are you with Half Barrel, Inc.? Okay, perfect, yep. This is a great time for you to come on up. Uh, good evening, Mayor Pacheco, council members. Um, my name is Pat Sullivan. My wife and I, Allie, um, are looking to purchase the Paradise Valley Liquor Store. Uh, the current sellers or current owners are retiring. They're, they're getting old and they want to retire and we want to purchase their business. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Any questions for the prospective owners? Where is it? Paradise Valley on, oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Paradise Valley, Paradise Valley Liquors. Oh, okay, right by the gas station. Yeah. Anything else? Cool, thank you guys, appreciate it. Thank you. The only thing I'd like to say is oh. good luck to you in your new business venture. Thank <laughs> you, sir. <laughs> Any others to speak in favor? At this time, I would ask those individuals who wish to speak in opposition to the transfer of ownership of retail liquor license number 30 to Half Barrel, Inc. to please approach the lectern. 
There being no others to speak for or against the transfer of ownership of liquor license number 30 to Half Barrel Inc., I now declare the public hearing closed. The chair would entertain a motion to, by minute action, authorize the transfer of ownership of liquor license, retail liquor license number 30 to Half Barrel Inc. So moved. Second. Moved by Vice Mayor Friel, seconded by Council Member Nell. Any discussion? Any amendments? Please cast your vote. Please record the vote. With Council Member Pollock's abstention noted and all other Council Members voting aye, the motion passes. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. I now declare the public hearing open for the consideration of the new uh, mi microbrewery license number 10. Mr. City Attorney, do you have any exhibits? Thank you, Mayor. We have four exhibits. Exhibit number one, correspondence from Fleur Tremble to J. Carter Napier, dated April 13, 2022. Exhibit number two, affidavit is of publication is published in the Casper Star Tribune, dated April 25, 2022. Exhibit number three, affidavit of website publication is published on the City of Casper website, dated April 13, 2022. And exhibit number four, liquor license application filed March 29, 2022. Thank you, Mr. City Manager. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, I think the only thing that I would add in addition to what's already been reported is that indeed this is the same building as the O'Reilly Auto Parts building. Um, evidently the building has been divided into two suites of which this potential new uh, brewing company would be located. Thank you. The council will now listen to public comment. Public hearing comments are limited to five minutes and no duplication of speakers will be allowed. At this time, I would ask those individuals who wish to speak in favor of the new microbrewery license number 10, Bullhorn Brewing, LLC, to please approach the lectern. Good evening. Hello. I'm Holden Kai. This is my stepdad, uh, Dr. Rosen. Hi. I, uh, I'm one of the owners. He's one of the owners. Um, it is in the O'Reilly's building, kind of down an alley in between budget blinds as well. Um, we just look forward to having a license, getting our business going. Awesome. Being a part of the community as well, so. Great. Any questions for these guys? Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Again, good luck. <laughs> At this time, I would ask those individuals who wish to speak in opposition to the new microbrewery license number 10, Bullhorn Brewing, LLC, please approach the lectern. Those who wish to speak in opposition. There being no others to speak for or against the new microbrewery license, number 10, Brew, uh, Bullhorn Brewing, LLC, I now declare the public hearing closed. Chair would entertain a motion to, by minute action, authorize new microbrewery license, number 10, Bullhorn Brewing, LLC. So moved. Moved by Vice Mayor Friel, seconded by Council Member Sutherland. Any discussions? Any amendments? Please cast your vote. Please record the vote. With Council Member Pollock's abstention noted, motion passes. Thank you. Good luck, you guys. Please read the ordinance on third reading by title only. An ordinance approving the Trails West Estates Number no. 6 subdivision agreement and the final plat of Trails West Estates Number no. 6. Chair to entertain a motion to approve on third reading the ordinance just read. So moved. Second. Which, oh, was that? <laughs> That's right, I'll go. Uh, moved by Council Member Sutherland, seconded by Council Member Nell. Council will now listen to public hearing. Public comments are limited to five minutes and no duplication speakers will be allowed. <clears throat> okay, any discussion? Amendments? Okay, chair to entertain a motion to acknowledge and authorize the signatory um, line on the ordinance to change from the former mayor, St Stephen K. Friel, to the current mayor, Ray Pacheco. So moved. Moved by Councilmember Johnson, seconded by Councilmember Gamroth. Any discussion on that point? Okay. All right, please cast the vote to accept this modification. 
Please record the vote. With Vice Mayor Friel abstaining, the motion passes. I suppose I should have abstained from that too, huh, John? Sure. <laughs> now I feel like a jerk. <laughs> Please cast your vote on the ordinance as modified. Oh, sorry. No, no, you're good. Can we do it now? Should I say it again? Please cast your vote on the ordinance as modified. Oh my gosh, I meant, all right. <laughs> Those glasses aren't helping. They're not helping me. Please record the vote. With Mayor Pacheco and Vice Mayor Friel abstaining, motion passes. No. Man, what a show up here. Council will now consider consent resolutions. Please read the consent resolutions by title only. 11A1, authorizing a release, release of demolition lien recorded against 1427 South Oak Crest Avenue, Casper, Wyoming. 11A2, authorizing amendment number one to the contract for professional services with Spare Labs Incorporated. 11A3, approving and adopting the 2021 Casper Tourism Master Plan. 11A4, authorizing a contract for professional services with JB Engineers for the 2022 Construction Testing and Material Sampling Services Project. 11A5, authorizing an agreement with Trado Construction LLC for the Industrial Avenue Drainage and Surfacing Improvements Elm to David Project. 11A6, author authorizing an agreement between the City of Casper and the Natrona County Conservation District. 11A7, authorizing change order number one to the agreement with LAME LLC for a price reduction and time extension for the solid waste facility fiber optics extension project. 11A8, authorizing the procurement agreement with Accent Pass Packaging Incorporated for the Baylor Bags project. 11A9, authorizing a contract for professional services with Keto Thor Thorstenson LLP for audit services for the fiscal years 2022 through 2026. 11A10, authorizing an amendment to the Memorandum of Understanding regarding management of investment funds between the Amico Reuse Agreement Joint Powers Board, Natrona County, and the City of Casper for investment management services. 11A11, authorizing a contract for professional services with Veolia ES Technical Solutions, LLC, for hazardous waste disposal services project. 11A12, approving and adopting the Casper's, Casper Area MPO City of Casper Complete Streets Plan for the Casper Metropolitan Area. 11A13, approving and adopting the Casper Area MPO's East Yellowstone Intersection Improvement Study for the Casper Metropolitan Area. Thank you. The Chair to entertain a motion to adopt the consent resolutions just read. So moved. Second. Moved by Council Member Pollock, seconded by Vice Mayor Friel. Mr. City Manager, do you have any comment on any of the items? Okay. Any abstentions or nay votes? Please cast your vote. Please record the vote. With all council members voting aye, the motion passes. Go ahead, yep. So, uh, I've been advised that I can actually stay for the discussion. I am gonna abstain from the vote. The vote. Perfect, you're good, okay, awesome. If that discussion comes up, I will not. Be okay, abstained. sounds good. Council will now discuss the minute action for submission of six Wyoming Association of Municipalities resolutions. Because this is not on the consent agenda, it will be open for discussion by council. Please read the minute action title. Authorizing the submission of six Wyoming Association of Municipalities resolutions as Casper's submission to Wyoming Association of Municipalities legislative priority con considerations for 2023. Thank you. Chair to entertain a motion to approve the minute action agenda item just read. Moved by Councilmember Johnson, seconded by Councilmember Sutherland. Mr. City Manager, reports. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, every year the Council has an opportunity to propose some ideas for WAM's uh, legislative agenda. And uh, the good news is, with regard to this process, the City Council of Casper has been fairly uh, um, fortunate with regard to WAM adopting a number of their uh, the council's issues and concerns and, and thoughts with respect to the larger uh, statewide agenda, if you will, that WAM supports as they go forward and advocate with regard to issues that are important, and, uh, important excuse me, to their body. Uh, we do have six ideas that we would like the council to consider this evening. 
And pursuant to the direction that you offer tonight, uh, we will carry these forward and see if we can get WAM to, uh, to pitch in and, and uh, enter these items into their broader legislative agenda. All right, thank you. So we'll open that up for discussion on any of those six items. That we, did, we did discuss it in pre-meeting too, so. Council Member Cuthy. Well, the council themselves heard it in the pre-meeting, but I, the public needs to hear it as well, is that basically the first resolution that it spells out uh, wanting to give enhanced uh, penalties for, what did it say here exactly, for vulnerable professions and volunteers. And so to me, all this is doing is setting up another special interest group, so to speak, similar to even hate crimes. A person is convicted of murder. Why do we have to go through another trial, spend more tax money to add more penalty when the man's already gonna be in prison for life? Murder is murder and a person is a person and the penalty should be the same, and we shouldn't be trying to set up separate classes of punishment for various professions. In today's market, for example, with all of the push for green energy and the hate towards oil and gas, is an oil rig worker gonna be a protected profession? Is a coal miner going to be a protected profession? I mean, this can get totally out of control, and I think we should just stick with the laws that are on the books and the penalties that are assigned for assault and aggravated assault. So I guess if there's a way to abstain from or vote no on one of these, I would vote no on this particular issue. Councilmember Sutherland. Um, I guess just to respond to that idea, I'm in my day job, um, I work on preventing mass violence like atrocities, genocide, crimes against humanity. These are all crimes that are con committed based on another individual's identity, and I do think that it matters to understand why c crimes are committed, why people are certain vulnerable populations, because there are certain policy mechanisms that can then be put into place to protect those people. So if we don't recognize certain degrees of vulnerability, it limits our ability to respond and to protect them. And so it does, There, unfortunately, there are a lot of different people who are vulnerable, but I think we have to understand where power is at play. Um, and I think we need to understand how to mitigate that so that certain people don't suffer unnecessarily. So that's my perspective on that. In the discussion. Oh, yeah, Council Member Nell. Thank you. I see both sides of it. Being a Christian, I'm persecuted quite often, and I'm okay with it, but I got big shoulders, and not everybody does. So uh, I don't know that a law makes any difference. I think if they're going to come after you, they're going to come after you, and it, it is what it is. And this is just another form of maybe punishing that or trying to get them to stop doing it. So I'm not, I'm not opposed to it uh, by any means, but I've been a victim of it many times, and sometimes we just got to turn the other cheek. It'd be a lot easier. Just a thought. Anybody else? Yeah, go ahead, Council Member Kathy. Thank you. Well, and it's one thing too, is this didn't, to me, this didn't specifically state against people and individuals. This was stating against professions, and that's, that's what is bothering me. Because that's, that's what it says in the second one, is that uh, crimes committed against vulnerable professions and volunteers. So it isn't, you can be black, white, Asian, whatever, and it doesn't matter. This is against professions, and we do not need to be separating people based on professions. Mr. City Manager, when they're talking about vulnerable professions, vulnerable um, volunteers and things like that, is there a clarification on what they're trying to say on that? Mr. Mayor, um, th this is intended to include not only vulnerable professions and volunteers associated with those professions, but also vulnerable persons as well. Um, certainly a lot of the, the whereases discuss professions and, and those kinds of things and the enhanced penalties associated with, with what those might include. 
but but the uh, as the title indicates vulnerable persons are definitely intended to be included with regard to statute proposals that may come forward during the interim discussion process and potentially during the draft legislation process so it would be it would be safe to say that vulnerable populations i.e. Uh, the elderly um, those that would be uh, disabled physically um, mentally uh, as vulnerable populations that do need protection um, from from um, uh, things that happen whereas an able-bodied person could protect themselves possibly get away um, uh, or people that don't understand what's going on um, that it can be assaulted um, physically sexually so forth that's my understanding yeah, Mr. Mayor, I would agree with that. The net that's being cast with this proposal is meant to include the populations that you're describing as well as professions that could be included in, in, in vulnerable situations. So, so for me, what I, what I'll, and I know that Bruce will have something to say here in, in a second. Um, for me, it, make, it makes sense to support a resolution like this only because if we're looking at vulnerable populations like those that are um, mentally, physically handicapped, et cetera, um, that what we can do to, to help them because there are people that can't be. So this, this resolution completely makes sense to me. Um, and, and, and so um, I think it's a, it's a fantastic way to help, especially uh, those that are vulnerable. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, Council Member Nell. I, I do agree with you. It, the, the only problem with this is, and I did read it, it's a very broad compassing, very broad. I mean, this goes all the way down to referees, uh, coaches, I mean, it's you. You go to a basketball game and get in an argument with the ref. You could have yourself in a real pickle. This is, um, or a coach, the way he's coaching your kid. This it's very, very broad. So I would urge you guys to read it um, before you vote on it because it, there are some really good things about it, and it does protect. But there, there's a lot of things in there that are just seem a little off to me that maybe don't don't need that type of protection. Um, but they've lumped it all in there. And as, as our government's really good at doing. Um, so I would urge you to read it, because I did read it. And I was just uh, kind of scratching my head when I read it. And I thought, man, there's some things in here that aren't, really aren't pertinent. Somebody's going to get themselves in trouble and not even know it. But just a thought. Councilmember Pollock. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Carter, can you remind us where um, this topic was, was or was not taken up in the interim? Uh, Mr. Mayor, um, council member, this was assigned to judiciary. Uh, however, the, uh, the proposal has come up before and uh, this may be the first time that WAM has taken it up if indeed this idea, and, it, and it's really only meant to be an idea at this stage, is adopted into WAM's legislative agenda. Yeah, yeah. So at the at this stage, if council is generally in agreement that something should be considered, we could give a thumbs up on this, and then really the the details are are far from being ironed out. It's got to go through the interim process. I mean, we we are not in a position to be deciding details: who's covered, who's not covered. That'll be for the legislature to decide, um, and we can work with WAM to ensure that we are feeling good about where the details are kind of materializing as that happens, correct? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, uh, council member, it would be my hope that the, the Casper City Council, for example, uh, would be a partner in having that conversation with the Judiciary Committee and WAM uh, to discuss ideas that perhaps wouldn't have been considered had this Casper City Council not included some of these thoughts with regard to a, a very draft ground level proposal. Great point. Yeah, Council Member Johnson. Yeah, I just wanted to point out that, I mean, it also protects people that are in um, positions. So here, I'll just read it. It says, professionals such as therapists, coaches, clergy, doctors, and teachers have the opportunity to victimize people under their care. And the state of Wyoming provides no criminal statute to protect vulnerable persons from victimization of people in positions of authority. I don't, I mean, you know, the other stuff, as Councilmember Pollock said, is, I mean, can be ironed out. But uh, I can think of one one good um, profession that is victimized a lot, and that's Census Bureau workers. I mean, was seven, I think 700 Census Bureau workers were assaulted, had guns pointed at them, chased off of people's property in 2010 for fulfilling a constitutional requirement. So, I mean, I do think that 
we should have something. I mean, I just don't, I don't think it's just another law to add a law to a pile of laws. I, I do think it has a place. <clears throat> Any other discussion on that? No. So it sounds like that it's broad, but it will be taken into consideration when it goes into the state legislature. Come back and we can take a look at that. So, okay. All right. Any other discussion on any of the other resolutions? Any amendments? Okay, please cast your vote. Please record the vote. Oh. Because of that person. Gotcha. Please record the vote. Like I said, I, I'm in favor of the other five. <laughs> I note that for the record, that's fine. Okay. With Council Member Kathy voting nay for the resolution pertaining to vulnerable persons and Council Member Pollock abstaining from the resolution pertaining to liquor licenses, motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Please read the consent minute action title. Rejecting all bids received for the City Hall asbestos abatement project. Chair, to entertain a motion to approve the consent minute action I agenda item just read. So moved. Second. Moved by Councilmember Pollock, seconded by Vice Mayor Friel. Any abstentions or nay votes? Please cast your vote. Please record the vote. With all council members voting aye, the motion passes. At this time, we ask council members to bring forward relevant concerns or any items of interest. We'll start with council member Johnson. Yes. Council member Gamroff. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Just a couple things. Went to the Hope and Harmony fundraiser for Child Development Center uh, last Saturday night. Uh, super successful fundraiser, was glad to see the generosity uh, from our citizenry, so raised a lot of money for a good cause and uh, they hosted a great event, so uh, congratulations to them, thanks for everyone that came out and supported them. And then uh, had a Casper Youth Council meeting uh, Sunday, Councilwoman Pollock was a guest and spoke to uh, the Youth Council about it, her work with Engage, so I want to thank her for her attendance. And uh, we'll be seeing them, I believe it's next week, um, uh, we'll be doing some uh, interviews and stuff with them so that they can disseminate that among uh, their demographics. So um, looking forward to that. That's all I have. Thank you. Awesome. Council Member Pollock. Thank you. I was um, yeah pleased to be invited to the Casper Youth Council meeting this Sunday. Um, they asked me there they're working on a survey to start gathering some uh, data from I believe they set their demographic 15 to 18 year olds um, about issues, ideas affecting Natrona County, Casper specifically. So I got to talk to them a little bit about a few surveys that I've conducted and different ways that we've gone about collecting data um, to help support um, you know, different ideas and bring uh, the perspective um, to the council in a way that is supported with um, with some data. So talked about that. It was really nice to, to meet all of them and, and chat with them and um, look forward to following up with them on that survey and, and hope that it will result in some really interesting data for us to consider as we think about uh, what we do here and how it affects the young people of this community. And I think that's all I have. Thank you. Council Member Nell. Uh, Kind of beating a dead horse here, but it's my first time back and um, just can't say enough about the community that we live in and the folks who reached out to my wife and I, the prayers, the kindness. Uh, it's been, it's why we live here where we live. So thank you everyone for just everything. Very much appreciated by us. Council Member Sullivan. Thank you. Um, a couple of things I promised to follow up um, in my report on the Amico Reuse Joint Powers Board meeting that I missed last time. Um, the update that I have is that we have a new county representative on that board now, um, Mr. Peter Nicolason. So he'll be joining us for the first time next week. Um, we also have a new app for our city, which I felt like I should mention, kind of exciting. Um, a nice way to integrate all of our city functions 
um, the 311 app where you reported things previously is, is integrated in there, so that's called Connect Casper. Please download it. And it's Mother's Day this weekend, so thanks, Mom, and tell your moms you love them. That's it. <laughs> Council Member Kathy. Uh, yes, last Wednesday I went to the uh, CPU Advisory Board meeting and uh, went over the O&O budget for FY23 and also at the same time the Natrona County Conservation District gave their annual update and people will possibly wonder why we participate with and want to help support the Conservation District and one of their big pushes right now is to help the farmers and ranchers get off of flood irrigation and onto pivot irrigation because what that does is the flood irrigation, they actually over irrigate, the water percolates down to the Cody Shale, then migrates into the river, which is what raises the selenium content in the river, which is what we are ultimately looking at in our water treatment plant, is that the effluent that will come out of the water treatment plant will actually have to meet certain selenium levels and it doesn't matter what the water comes in at, we have to meet the effluent. So it could come in at, say, 10 parts, but if the EPA says it's got to be at 5, we have to take that extra salinity out, selenium out. And so if through the conservation district they can keep lowering the selenium levels in the river, then that is not going to put as much of a burden on the communities that live around here and that have to use the waste wastewater treatment plant. I can read it, but I can't speak it. <laughs> so, but anyhow, that is a big push and a very worthwhile cause that we are using some of the city's taxpayer money for because it will pay dividends down the road when the Sam Hobbs plant has to be upgraded. And uh, that was what we went over there. And for those people that live on the east side of town uh, that are looking at the intersection of 15th and Outer Drive, uh, got the word this afternoon that um, there was a slight error in digging and they will probably have that intersection closed for another two weeks. I'm sorry to inform that, but they nicked the water line, so that has to be repaired. Thank you. Vice Mayor. Attended the uh, College National Finals Rodeo meeting on Monday of this, or yesterday, um, June 12th through the 19th. The course is when the rodeo comes here. Ticket sales are up quite a bit from where they were, uh, and they are on sale now. This week they started uh, sifting the soils and amending some uh, sand in that soil to get rocks out and stuff so that uh, none of the livestock or animals end up twisting a hoof. So. But, uh, yeah, that's it. Tickets are on sale, so go out and get your tickets. Thank you. Uh, I don't have anything to update. I know that, um, I believe, was it Chris Navarro, Carter, wanted to um, talk about some of his art that he's doing. Um, and so uh, could you just expound just a smidge? I know we met, oh, it was a while ago. I, think, I don't know if you were, you were part of that meeting. But just really quick, just so we can... Uh, Mr. Mayor, he basically wants to make a proposal with regard to an installation on city property. And that, that's the, the crux of it. The crux of it, yeah. Okay. Uh, so I wanted to see if that was something council would entertain, number one, to consider, um, and two, is it something we would put on a work session down the road? If everybody's okay with that? Okay. All right. Um, and then um, I guess... Having the conversation um, about what's been going on in our community, especially with this clinic that's coming in, um, I do, do want to make it very, very, very clear that each council member um, certainly will, can, in their own time, if they want to, if they don't want to, express where they stand um, on such a very uh, difficult uh, conversation as abortion. Um, it is certainly a lightning rod conversation. We also know that it's a very difficult conversation um, that we have. I, for myself, have long stood um, and have never shied away from um, talking about my, my own self as a devout um, pro-life Catholic. 
when I talk about that too, not only with abortion, but what I do talk about is, is the sanctity of life from womb to tomb and what that means. And so we certainly are on this road right now when we talk about abortion, and we should have that conversation, a very um, dignified conversation with peace, love, and compassion for all people. For people that have chosen to choose, if they believe in uh, pro-choice, if not, um, if, they are pro, if they're pro-life. And it's a difficult conversation to have. And so the second part to that is, is when we talk about life issues, from womb to tomb, when we talk about the sanctity of each human being, created in the image of God, straight, gay, lesbian, transgendered, all people are created in the image of God. And we look at those life issues. That's the conversation we should have. And how we do those things and what that means in our life issues and how we talk about that. The dignity of all human beings. That's the conversation with peace, dignity, and compassion created in the image of God. And that is the tough conversation that we have before us. So my question is, is do we want to have a conversation as a council in a work session uh, to talk about a pro-life proclamation uh, uh, that we would have. May I? Yeah, Council Member. No. I, I don't think, personally, I don't think it's appropriate. I, I think if we want to come out publicly and state where we stand, it's an emotional issue. It's not a legal issue, which is what this council generally should be dealing with. So, if I guess as much as I'm for it, and everybody knows that, I don't think it's a conversation that we as a council should have, just in the event that it cause, causes or would cause any type of separation amongst us. We have such a good working group and uh, full of different views. And um, I, think that's, I think that's appropriate and I think it's fair. And so I would be probably against doing that, but I will do what everyone else wants to do. Councilmember Pollock. Thank you. I agree with Councilman Nell. I think that um, it's an intensely uh, partisan issue and politicized issue and I'm very proud to be working on a nonpartisan um, elected body, and I think it's really important that we acknowledge the um, the opportunity that that affords us to to work really well together, to not be uh, coming into sharp division and conflict with one another, to address the parts of city business that we actually have jurisdiction over. Um, and so, to me, I, I don't think it's appropriate because it is not. Um, an area that we have jurisdiction and where we could make any sort of tangible change even if we wanted to. Um, so to me, um, you know, certainly know that this will be a conversation that continues around our community, but um, I think there are bodies where uh, it is more appropriately staged than this one. Thank you. Council Member Sutton. I would just concur with both previous statements. Okay. Council Member Gamroth. Getting repetitive, but I didn't speak on it earlier. I uh, would concur with those thoughts as well. Uh, I didn't, uh, the reason I didn't have anything to say is because I think it's a topic that would serve only to divide and that there's nothing within the jurisdiction of city council that, you know, we'd have any sort of authority to do anything over. And so that's why I don't see much value in us taking a stand on it one way or another. Uh, Councilman now brought up the federal, um, you know, the political reporting of potential overturn of Roe v. Wade, in which case Wyoming already has a trigger ban, in which case it'd be illegal. So it uh, could all prove to be irrelevant in short order anyways. And so uh, I would just concur with all those thoughts that um, I, I, would, I, I like the working nature of our council right now, and I don't think it would serve us much good to, um, you know, talk about these polarizing topics that we as an organization don't have any control over. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Yeah, go ahead. I did forget one thing. I was going to ask, can we get put on the agenda, Carter? I got reached out several times this week, and I forgot about it during my time. But when you're going south on Poplar and you come up on CY, uh, you have that extra lane that goes nowhere. And that's one of our worst intersections in town uh, for accidents. And uh, it seems... Uh, everyone's solution that they brought to me was to make that another right-hand turn lane since there's two lanes to turn into and stop people from merging in that intersection. I do understand and they also understand that it's a state highway, uh, but they were wondering if we could urge them 
to turn that lane that goes to nowhere. Do you know where I'm talking about? Uh, Mr. Mayor, Councilman, I, I assume we're talking about uh, southbound on South Poplar approaching uh, CY. CY. And you have that extra lane on the right that literally goes nowhere, and then people try to merge in the intersection, and it's the cause of a tremendous amount of accidents. And nothing's been done about it for years, and it, the accidents keep happening. So uh, one, several of the suggestions I was given is if we could urge the state to make that another right-hand turn lane because there's two lanes there, it would also afford those semis an opportunity to get in that left lane and make that corner without curb hopping and hitting that light, which has been hit many, many times. So uh, it seems like a, re a real win-win. I didn't know if we could get that on the agenda to maybe – uh, approach the state with a, a fix for a, a terrible situation. Thank you for entertaining me. M Mr. Mayor, uh, Councilman, the, the good news is that this is a very timely conversation in that uh, the state is going to be working on that stretch of Poplar here in the next year or so. And while the, the permanent fix with regard to what is being proposed uh, by users of that area uh, you know, maybe a, a year or so down the road, including that in the scope, again, for the permanent fix that would be needed uh, is, is what we're dealing with right now, as a matter of fact. So adding that to the scope is easy for us to do. I don't know that it necessarily warrants a, a work session topic. I think we can just do that. So you don't, we don't need to get a, on a work session on that? I don't think so. I think if council's okay with us trying to make that a better intersection all the way around, that would be an item we could include. You have a comment? Yeah, my comment was at that same intersection, figure out a way to make that southbound left turn lane a little bit longer. Basically, you get two small cars in it, and that's it. And at times, there's nobody in that, and traffic is backed up. And I see people pulling into basically oncoming traffic to get up to that light because that left turn lane is so short. So that's another thing to go along with that same intersection. Awesome. On a final note, to close up the evening, I am, um, it's, it's always been an honor to serve on this council, um, but it's specifically the, this group of council members has a, has a very deep affinity for how they work together. This is probably one of the finest council councils I've been on, and I mean, it's a good group of people, good humans. I appreciate your guys' stance. We can disagree, but we can also walk away with respect and, and for one another, um, even though we can disagree. And I think that's a lesson we can all learn in our lives and in our community, how we treat one another um, with dignity and respect. So thank you, I appreciate you all. The next meetings of the City Council will be a work session to be held at 4.30, Tuesday, May 10th, 2022, in the Council meeting room and a regular Council meeting to be held at 6 p.m., Tuesday, May 17th, 2022, in the Council chambers. The chair would entertain a motion to adjourn. Moved by Council Member Kathy. Second. Seconded by Council Member Friel, or excuse me, Vice Mayor Friel. Please cast your vote. Please record the vote. All members voting aye, the motion passes.